Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so it is day two of sneak peek week and we are going to be painting our apple pie attachment. So yesterday we painted, let me see if I can get my Vanna White skills, uh, that fun pumpkin, 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 come on guys. We painted that fun fall apple and today we are going to paint part two of our coordinating home decor sets, which is gonna be our pump, pumpkin, y'all, the word pumpkin is in my head, our apple pie porch leaner attachment. Now, this does not have to be for a porch leaner. This is how I'm going to be using it. It's going to be a 10 inch apple pie attachment for my porch leaner out front, but you can use it for an interchangeable door hanger. You can use it for, well, you can't see my tiered tray because my pumpkin is hiding it. That might be where the pumpkin's coming from, <laughs> but I like to use mine for tiered tray, uh, little inserts. I like to use it for just adding on a shelf somewhere, but I typically, when I do paint a 10 inch attachment, which if you're, if you purchase the bundle from Home Creations, it comes with the door hanger, the attachment, and the garland pieces all in the exact same sizes that I'm painting today and this week. Um, I usually use this for my porch leaner attachment, which is 12 inches wide. So a 10 inch porch leaner attachment is not overpowering. It's perfectly proportioned for the O of my welcome in my porch leaner attachment. So with all that said, y'all, let's go ahead and go full table and we'll get to chatting and we will, um, oh, uh, we'll get into the tutorial because this one's going to be super fun. We're going to be practicing. We're really going to be diving into our shading techniques today, okay? So we're going to be floating. So yesterday I showed you how to float with the heel. It's not your typical way to float the heel of your, today we're going to really utilize the toe of our angle brushes, okay? When we really need to get really tight into a corner, this one has a bunch of little corners, right? So we're going to utilize the toe of our, so I'm showing you all different ways to use these angle brushes, which are, hint, fun fact, my favorite brush, um, because they are so versatile and they, they, they do such a good job. So we're going to paint this today. So let's go ahead and go full table. So you're going to see my ceiling for just a second, but then we will get into the tutorial before we do. Let's go ahead and go over our secret word. Our secret word usually gives us the, whatever I, um, need to get to you. So if you're interested in a particular something while we're painting today, today we're going to be talking about paint studio. So our secret word is paint. Yesterday it was a different word. Today is it's paint and tomorrow it'll be a different word. But today we're talking about the paint studio. And if you'd like more information on the paint studio, which that's what sneak peek is, it's a, it's a, it's a sneak peek into what we do inside the paint studio. We paint a home decor set all month long. We're just jamming it into a week long, um, uh, five days, okay? So you're getting a good sneak peek of what it's like to be a member, a family member, we call ourselves a family, inside the paint studio. So if you'd like more information, just put that word paint down in the comments. And when I'm done going live, I will come back and I will link um, where you can find more information to that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go full table. Let's get to painting. Let's have some fun. Whoop, there's my ceiling. Let me just bring you down just a little bit. Let's go ahead and flip the camera around and then flip it around again. How about that? Is everything right where it should be? Okay, so there's our secret word. There is our apple pie attachment. I also need, y'all, guess what I forgot? I can't see your comments, so let me go get that. Okie dokie. Gosh, I'm looking at the destruction that happened over here with my sweet baby Ray. She just demolished the floor over here. So now I've got comments. How are y'all doing this morning? If you're catching the live this morning and watching along, uh, why don't you tell me that you're here? Say good morning. Tell me what's going on in your world. Um, but if you're catching the replay, make sure you put that hashtag replay. Uh, just let me know that you popped by. I'll say hi too. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and base coat our, we're gonna go ahead and base coat our piece. Just like yesterday, I'm just using a sponge. This is from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a two pack. I cut them in half, so I make four sponges out of one pack. And we're just gonna go ahead and buff that on. Now, if you can tell, this was already used. It's the same one I used yesterday. I washed it out. Actually, I left it, I kinda left it on the table, didn't wash it 
early enough and it got really crusty, okay? The paint dried on it. All I did was I took some uh, what I call high octane rubbing alcohol, which is 91%. It's, you can find it in the pharmacy section. At my Walmart, it's about $3 for a big old container of it. And that's how I clean my brushes. That's how I clean my sponges. So that's, that was fun this morning. So all I did was I soaked it in that. It didn't take a lot because remember sponges soak it up. So I just let, I soaked it on top of where the paint was and I let it sit for a minute, a couple minutes actually. And then I went back and with warm water started massaging it and all that paint started lifting out of it. I did it two or three times um, just to get the job done without damaging the, the sponge, but I was able to revive the sponge from dried on paint. Morning, Jerry and Toby. How are y'all doing? Hey, Carlene. Still trying to get rid of COVID. It's uh, making sure to go all the way through our household this time. Lori, I swear, this is y'all's second time too. I hate that for you because I know the, uh, the brain fog that comes along with that thing is bad enough, much less put a little bit of a cold on top of it. Y'all, Lori sent me a TikTok this morning, and it made me giggle. But she goes, please, is this you? And it was this lady that was doing this, this dance. And she did. She did look a lot like me, especially back when I was a teenager. I was like, does someone have video of me um, teaching? Because I used to teach the dances for, like, VBS and, and um, children's camps when I was younger. I was like, oh, gosh, is, is this old footage uh, from a, a kid's ca summer camp that I did? And then I looked at the name, and the y'all, the funniest part of it, the name was R-I-K-A, which is my name without the E. I was like, hold up. This is too, this is too close for comfort. This is, this, this is really freaky here. And I told her, no, it's not me, but I totally get where you saw that. Yeah, she says it gave me the giggles. It was funny. It was funny. I'm not going to lie. Good morning, Stephanie. Did you, oh, thank you, Terry, for splattering the paint, for spreading the love. Miss Rose, how are y'all doing this morning? Getting a much needed man, uh, uh, oh, a petty and watching. Oh, girl, enjoy your petty. Get your pedicure and just kick back and enjoy. I, I kind of want one of those. Okay, so I'm just going to blow dry. All those brush strokes, I don't care. Okay. This. All these brush strokes. I do not care. It's not that big of a deal. Only because, and the, normally I would, I would try to get rid of a lot of these little strokes. But the technique that we're going to be doing on this design today is going to be a fun, very forgiving, very um, muddled look. So this is going to add to it. So glad to be able to watch live today. With no work distractions. Hey, Don, you got, you got the day off? Girl, how'd you get the day off? So, this is what we're painting today. Okay. So, we're going to start with the furthest layer back. If you know me and you painted with me for a while, you know I like to paint in layers. Because I don't like to fussy paint. And what I mean by fussy paint is I don't like to have to take my brush and, like, once I say if I painted all this crust part first and I was like, oh crud, I got to go in and now I've got to fill in the spots that are pie filling. I don't want to have to go in and fill that. I'd rather just, even if it's going to mean that I've got to use a little bit more paint and people say that's wasting paint. No, that's saving my sanity. Okay. So I would much rather waste paint and paint this whole thing, the filling part and get that just right and then come in on top and do my lattice. Okay. I'd much rather do that, okay? Even if it means wasting a, a, about an ounce of paint, I'd rather do that than lose my sanity trying to fussy paint in each little square. So to achieve that apple pie look, we need a couple of browns, okay? We need, let's go with milk chocolates. Let's go with light buttermilk. And let's go with raw umber. And we have decided that 
dark chocolate in the deco art line is you know a good substitute for that it's just a darker brown you know that does not have to be exactly this brown i don't have dark chocolate but i do have raw umber oh thank you brenda teaching this morning students are testing so popped in for a quick minute i love the pie i am excited about the pie attachment it's just different it's just different. So I'm just putting all three of these shades on my palette. They're just side by side. I'm not mixing them together. We're gonna messy paint, okay? But we're gonna start off by painting the entire thing milk chocolate, okay? So this is just milk chocolate. This is just milk chocolate. And I'm doing a full coverage coat. Oh, there's a little bit of Just a little chip of, I'm sure, wood or something from when I sanded. Okay, so I'm just filling this in with milk chocolate, and I underestimated the amount of paint I was going to need. Already having to pour extra paint on my palette. Testing my machine before heading to work. Ooh, Deidre, I saw that your laser tube came in. So, a laser tube is the light bulb practically it's a fancy light bulb that creates the actual laser beam uh, inside the laser and Dietra is needed to be replaced which doesn't happen often you know i i've had this particular machine that i have i've had it for two years and um i treat mine like a, a newborn baby like i my i treat my laser like it's the most fragile thing in the world even though it's not they they can take some wear and tear y'all um but i treat it like it's a newborn baby just because what Deidre's going through with changing out the tube it freaks me out to have to do that but i do have a backup tube just in case so for with lasers if i know this is not what we're talking about today but just for an fyi because i have had a laser for a good good hot minute these are the parts that I would keep on hand, have a backup of, okay? So in your house, do you not keep a, a backup light bulb? Do you not? I mean, you always have a backup light bulb, even if it's just one, you have a backup light bulb in case one light bulb goes out, right? So why wouldn't you keep a backup laser tube? There, you know, it's pricey to have backup parts, but a laser tube, especially if your business depended on your laser running at all times. If you cannot afford to have it down, um, a, a backup laser tube and a and backup lenses, okay? So to have an extra lens, that's the thing that the laser shoots through to, before it actually gets through the wood. Um, a backup lens is always good to have on, on hand. Those aren't super expensive. That's actually just kind of, you know, buying an extra light bulb kind of thing but the laser tube that is one of those things that you don't need immediately but you would like to when, when you get when you get a chance to invest in it go ahead and have a backup laser tube on hand i've known a lot of friends that have had lasers and they needed that backup tube and they had to sit and wait on shipping and some of their laser tubes came in broken so not that it's like they had to wait on shipping twice because they had to replace and ship back the broken one that came in because let's think about it they're fancy light bulbs they're super fragile so them coming in broken isn't unheard of all right so let me get my paint towel if you know me i like to paint with a paint uh, a dish towel i don't like to use paper towels i don't like for my paper towel they get wet too fast and i don't like my hands to get super wet with dirty paint water so I, and I like to be able to use things over and over and over again, which is like I, why I like to use sponges, why I like to take care of my brushes. Um, and I also, I'll throw this in the, in the laundry, you know, I can reuse this. This is one of my original towels that I've painted with since I've started my business. So I, I do recommend a paint towel over uh, paper towels. Paper towels used to be one of the few things when I ha uh, would throw paint parties, I would forget to buy and I was always having to stop at the Dollar Tree or somewhere to run in real quick and buy them on the way to the party. It's just one of those things that I never thought about because I don't typically paint with paper towels. So um, after a couple of parties, I started investing 
every time I went to Walmart, I would buy a couple of hand towels and I built up a party set of hand towels as well. So even at um, paint parties, I use hand towels. I have a classroom set and it keeps me from having to buy paper towels. Wisdom, I'm getting a backup set. <laughs> Teacher, as much as you run yours, it would benefit you to have a backup of a lens and, and make sure you get the right lens and a, and a laser tube. Laser tube, now that you have a fresh one in there, you can wait a little while before you have to, you know, go ahead and make that investment. But always have it before you need it. Anything else you can order. No big deal. And once a year, check the exhaust tube and make sure that hasn't dry rotted because that needs to be nice and fresh. All right, so if you would like more information on the Paint Studio, our secret word today, because it changes every time we paint, our secret word today is paint. So that is for um, more information on the Paint Studio. That is a painting membership where I teach you a new paint technique every month, and we practice it by making a home decor set, kind of like what we're doing this week. We make a coordinated home decor set, a door hanger, a porch cleaner attachment, and a garland, plus bonuses here and there. Every month there are bonuses, and it's always random. It could be, it could be a free template. It could be um, a door hanger template. It could be a free ornament. Ornaments are very popular, and they're easy paints, right? They're, it's an easy, fun, quick gratification project. Um, it could be a stencil file to make the work like we used yesterday. It could be a stencil file so that you can cut it out on your, your stencil machine um, to be able to not have to hand letter. Or a lot of times I like to gift background stencils because I love to add background stencils to just plain Jane, um, just plain Jane templates. I'm putting my hand here to kind of bounce the, the air back. So it's kind of getting extra blow dried at the same time. So it's getting hit. It bounces this way. It bounces back from my hand, back on here. So it's like it's, it's tag teaming. The, um, <laughs> Melissa says, I'm, oh, Melissa, you should already have your email. Have you not, have you not received it? Check your spam. It's coming from Wallace House Design Files at gmail.com. So you may want to um, search that email address. I'm thinking of staying in the paint studio. Let some other things, Oh, Laura, I won't lie. I was really sad. I was really sad. I, I, I totally understood. Uh, let some other things go so I can maybe stay in. What would I need since I've already canceled? Um, just, Laura, do me, the, do me a favor. Send me a private message. That way it gives me kind of like a, a notification so I don't forget, you know my brain. Um, send me a notification and I will will get you taken care of since you're already a current member. Let's see. Okay. Oh, you done? Okay, I'll send you another one. Okay. You'll you'll probably have two in your inbox now, but you'll have it'll bring it to the top of your in inbox. Okay. So after I go live, I'll probably send out the next, um, you get your e welcome email within 24 hours. So it may not be immediate, but it's within 24 hours. All right, so I'm going to take my angle brush. I'm going to start putting, uh, I'm going to dip it in both the milk chocolate and the raw umber. It's just a darker brown. Don't be afraid if you can't find uh, raw umber. I've heard a lot of people saying that their local stores don't carry this one in there, and that's okay. And I'm just messy painting this on here. It just means I'm painting both colors on at the exact same time. I'm not mixing them completely together um, because I want it, and I'm, I'm painting kind of in a circular. I want it to look like a little hurricane. If we were to look at a tornado or a hurricane from the top, uh, that's what I want it to look like, okay? And now that it's still wet, I'm adding, I haven't cleaned my brush yet. I added a little bit of light buttermilk. And this is what's going to give it that apple pie look, okay? All these colors just mixing together. Not completely making a new shade. You get all three colors kind of showcased in there. They're playing together. They're not completely mixing together, if that makes sense. And if you're, if you find that you're, paint is drying faster than you can can manipulate it 
add a little bit of blending gel to your, or you can get your brush wet. Here, I'll get my brush wet because we've played with blending gel. Let me show you what it looks like when you, and you just need to, to dip just the very tips. Like this is how, if my finger was the water, you need to just touch the water. It'll soak up just enough. Okay, this is what it looks like. Now, remember, I have dirty paint water, so whatever color, I've washed my brush. I'm gonna dip it again, just I'm tapping the water, okay? I'm just tapping the water. See how much water it brought? I don't wanna make a completely new shade. I just want these colors to muddle together, okay? This is gonna give us our apple pie filling look. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more milk chocolate and a little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit of all three. So there's the milk chocolate, there's the light buttermilk, there's the raw umber. I'm just adding all three. The more you uh, touch your brush to wood, the more it's going to muddle, but you can take it too far and make it a completely new shade of brown. All the, if you mess with it too much, Eventually, it, you'll just have one dot, one big old dot of one shade of brown. Looks like a latte, it does. Ooh, Ashley, you just inspired something. You inspired it. I'm so excited. I'm making a note, hold on, this is, I've gotta make a note. Because Ashley just, she just gave such a cute little idea, hold on. feel like this is going to be a future um, bonus to the studio because Ashley is a studio member um, and I feel like it just needs to be a bonus. It just needs to. I'm so excited about that. Hey, Becca. I found traditional burnt umber under decor. Yes, that'll work too. You just need a darker brown. Hi, <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Okie dokie. So we officially have our pie filling. You can make it as dark or as light as you want. I'm gonna kinda keep it this cinnamony looking color because the, um, let me look at my mock -up. Actually, I probably will tone it down just a little bit because that's really light. I actually like this color though. I really like this color. It almost looks like a chocolate pie. I'm tempted, I'm tempted. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, would y'all like to see another one? Because I do want to change the color. So I'm going to take my sponge again, okay? This is a quicker way to do it. If you don't want to mess with the, I'm going to not use the, the raw umber, okay? If I want to get a lighter look, if I want to make it, um, take a sponge. Okay, I really liked the latte look. I really did. And go in a circle. Ruben's TV show. It almost sounds like Dateline or something. So breaking news. Okay, so there we go. There's one. I don't like that as much. Let's break the. Let's break that out. The brush back out. I thought I was just kind of playing there. I don't like it. I like the brush stroke look. So let's go ahead and do that again. So I'm just going in a circular manner, just like we did. I like this color better for apple pie. The other one was more of a chocolate pie. That raw umber is, it really darkened it up. Okay, so here we go. We're just going like a hurricane. Any Hamilton fans? Did I just spark a, a little serenade session? We did not say the word hurricane. Anytime I hear the word hurricane, there's a certain song in the in the Hamilton play that talks about a hurricane. Okay, there we go, perfect, leave it alone. All right, I think I like this one. Did we like the darker version better or do we like the lighter version for apple pie? Remember, we're making an apple pie. I like what you have, Keep. I know, I did too. Priscilla, I did too, I liked it, but it was too dark. It looked like chocolate pie. And I was like, no, I really need, I really want this to be coordinating to my apple door hanger. I really want it to look like that. Another way you could do it, and I'm just going to explain it. Remember the technique that we used yesterday with the chip brush? You could have painted this entire thing milk chocolate with a little bit of raw, uh, with a little bit of uh, light buttermilk, just like we did here. Okay, you can get it to this point. 
when it dries, you can also add some dry brushing over it and it will add even more texture for your pie filling. But I'm gonna keep mine just like this. How is my morning going? Well, Sheila, it is, it's going just fine and dandy now that I get to talk to you. I'm just having a grand old time. Yes, uh, Deco Work does have a cinnamon color and it is beautiful. The one thing is, it's sheer though. It's, it's not very good coverage. I do, it's a beautiful cinnamon color. Um, this one, medium. What are we talking about with the medium? I've never watched Hamilton all the way to the end. I need to finish it. It's a long one. I'm not gonna lie, it's a three hour, I mean, it's a three hour play. Okay, so this Sheila Smith is um, milk chocolate, light buttermilk, muddled together. So let's blow dry because we need to move on to our next step, which is our crust, okay? And our crust we need to do in stages. I'm a big musical fan. In fact, today we're watching Grease. I'm going to watch Grease with Raylan. It's her last day of summer, technically. Stacy says she's so in love with the apple pie. I am too. I've been excited to paint this one. Okay, so we've got our filling nice and dry. It's still cold though. If it's cold to the touch, that means it's only dry to the touch. It's not bone dry. So we need to make sure it's bone dry before we start putting more wet paint on top of it. If it's cold to the touch, that means the paint underneath the very tip top layer is still wet. Karen says that her blanks are coming in today. If you were wondering how to get these blanks, you can find them at Home Creations. Um, I can link that in the in the comments. If you put the word paint, you'll get the link for Paint Studio and to Home Creations where you can find these blanks. It comes in a bundle, but you can also get them separately in whatever size you want from size four inches all the way to 24 inches. Any design that I offer, you can get it at Home Creations in any size from 4 to 24. Um, I got the email request. And just, yay! Okay, so Melissa found her email. I'm so excited. Um, okay, so do you have to, Cynthia says, do you have to join Studio to get the templates? For Paint Studio templates, yes, you have to join Studio to get the templates. They live in Studio for about 60 days before they're released to the public. So studio gets them ahead of time. So say we're painting fall right now, right? We're still in the, in the thick of summer, but we're painting fall right now. So in the paint studio, we're painting fall as well. I'm going to, while I'm chatting, I'm gonna go ahead and put light buttermilk and a little bit of um, light mocha on my palette. Probably gonna bump. So this is light mocha and light buttermilk. I'm gonna decide which one I like better because I, I had them both on the list. I'm gonna bump down in brush size. I was using a three quarters inch brush and I'm bumping down to a half inch. So, and I'm gonna use light buttermilk. I really like it better for a crust. Okay, where's my mock up? The swirls have got me all, all discombobulated. So when it comes to Paint Studio, yes, I do. Uh, if you want them in time to be able to paint them before you need them. So something that I do for Paint Studio is that I release their designs seasons ahead. So for fall, we're painting fall now. They're not gonna need fall until the end of August, mid-September. It depends on when, when you want to um, so I'm just painting, a, uh, I'm, I'm doing one stripe at a time, y'all. Um, it depends on when you want your fall to, to uh, what are the words that are try I'm trying to get out of my mouth? Um, depends on when you decide to go to decorate for fall. If you're an early bird, 
like I am, I like to go ahead and with wishful thinking, I have a fresh thing of baby wipes because yesterday I ran slap out while we were painting our, our apple. And I'm gonna just kind of clean this up. Oh, I painted over the line just a little bit. And while my paint's still wet, I wanna go ahead and clean that up. Okay, so they're painting fall. So no matter when they wanna put fall out, they have it ready and they have plenty of time to paint it before it's needed. So that's the, that's the beauty of being in the studio when it comes to the templates itself is that you're getting them in plenty of time. By the time they've released to the public, you should have already had it painted, right? So, um, so yes, technically you do have to be a member to get them unless you're okay with getting them out of season. Does that make sense? because they do eventually graduate to the to the website. But by the time they've graduated to the website, they've are, they're already, um, we've already moved on to the next season as painters. So you're technically getting them to store them for next year. I hope all that made sense. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this around because I like to paint towards myself. I'm a directional painter and it's okay to move your, your projects around. You do not have to keep it laying flat. In fact, I will pick it up sometimes to get it just at the right angle for me to see these etched lines because mine is etched. If you are persnickety about uh, your stripes, you can break out your painter's tape and paint with painter's tape. I'm using light buttermilk. I'm not going to be worried about my, my, my lattice stripes. This is supposed to look like dough, right? Dough is not perfectly straight or symmetrical. So I'm just kind of freehand my stripes on here. And to get nice and tight and clean edges, I'm going to go up on the chisel and drag my brush down. So those are my first set of stripes. Don't worry. We're not done yet. We just need a second. We need a second coat of that, and then we're going to come back and do our horizontal stripes. So we've done our vertical stripes so far. Love that black. What black? Where's the black? Oh, blank. Kay Griffin <laughs> Landrum. <laughs> I read black. I was like, where is there black? There should not be black on this. What did I do? <laughs> Love that blank. Thank you. Thank you. I love this one. Uh, studio temp. Yes, you do, but not others. Okay, so I do release public designs every week. Now, if, if you hang out with me on a regular basis, you know today is a very special day during the week. Every Tuesday, my designs in my shop over, you know, the digital versions, the printable templates, the JPEGs, they go on sale. They go on BOGO. And today is, is our BOGO sale. So if you're looking for some really cute templates that you want to add to your your um your stash um today is a good day to go grab some but i did not release new designs today because i did not want to confuse anybody during sneak peek week so there are no new designs today but template to wednesday is still going on okay so we're doing our second coat i probably should have let this dry just a little bit but that's okay it's probably going to become a streaky mess I didn't let it thoroughly dry. That is okay. We can fix it. I'm getting impatient because I'm an instant gratification kind of girl. I'm excited to see this one all painted up. Like I said, I am not worrying about these lattice, crusty parts being perfect. Although that right there is going to bug me. So we're going to clean that up. I painted too far out of line. There we go. Okay, let's blow dry that because we need to get rid of those streaks. Okay, so Melissa, you do get commercial rights. When, when you purchase one of my templates, whether it be through Paint Studio or through my website, you get commercial rights to, to sell any product that you make using the, the designs, right? You want to paint door hangers and, and sell them at a craft show? Absolutely. Go for it. I want you 
to get as much uh, um, return on your investment in the designs as humanly possible, right? The only thing you can't do is you can't resell the designs. You can't trace them. You can't um, you can't add something to them. You know, like you can't sell the digital version of the design itself. You can't you do a virtual paint party. I will say that unless you offer a blanks only option. I will say that you can offer a blanks only option for a virtual paint party. You just can't transfer the digital design uh, from you to somebody else. They have to purchase the design so that they have commercial rights as well. So that's kind of the only legality that kind of hangs up for uh, virtual paint parties. Anything else, you want to go uh, have a craft fair booth, you want to do a, a paint party where you show up and um, with a stack of blanks and a bunch of brushes and you teach a paint party, absolutely go for it. Absolutely. I'm all for it. Because so really this only needed two coats, but they were two streaky coats because I was impatient and didn't wait for it to dry. So I'm just giving kind of a half a coat just to reduce brush strokes. And then I'm gonna blow dry again and we're gonna work on our horizontal stripes. Okay, so let's blow dry. Raven Paint Studio is $15 a month until uh, 2023. So we only open twice a, month, uh, twice a year. So usually in the spring and in the fall. I haven't decided if we're going to keep it that way, but I do know that we will not open again until 2023. I'm done for the year. <laughs> I, will, I, want to, I want to close it down and focus on our family members and really just make it the best community that we can make it. Because I'm going to be real with you. It's my favorite place to be. When I open Facebook, I instantly go to a paint studio. Um, but it's $15 a month. Once and next year, we, when we do open again, we will raise the price. And uh, we will offer an uh, annual, when we do raise the price, an annual option. But right now it's $15 a month. And it's reoccurring, so once you register, it does all the work for you. You do not have to constantly pay an invoice every month. It automatically renews on the exact same day each month. So say you sign up today, which is the 16th. So September 16th would be your next installment, right? And it automatically does it. You don't have to think about it. Light buttermilk, let's, I'm um, out. Let's add that to my palette. Now we're gonna go, let me see. Let me, let me see how my, can I just pick? I think I can just pick. And my husband hugged me this morning on his way out the door and I can still smell his cologne. I still smell it. It's in my hair. Like he, he put his cologne on and then he left. So the, the very next thing after he put his cologne on was hug me and so it was fresh on his, on his shirt. And all, every time my hair kind of like in my face, I can smell his cologne. So if you catch me smelling my hair, I'm not being weird, I promise. I just, he, I smell like him and it makes me miss him. He came home yesterday. He's gonna hate me for saying this. He works in the car business. So any random character can, can walk through the door, right? It's a public, it's a public business. The public <laughs> shows up. So um, he came home yesterday and he goes, I, I have missed you so much today. I was like, oh, I'm thinking he's being sweet. <laughs> and apparently he had one, one situation that kind of was a doozy and it took over all situations for the day. It kind of became one of those situations that just never went away. He goes, I feel like I haven't been around one normal person. <laughs> I was like, oh, you consider me normal? I don't know if I could take that as a compliment. Yes, ma'am. Can you talk? Yeah, you can say something. What you want to say? What? I need you to use your voice. I have no clue what you're trying to say. Okay, baby, I'm, I don't, I can't. I can't play the charades game right now, okay? I don't know what you're trying to say. Okay. 
You want pizza rolls? Well, you can have pizza rolls for lunch when we get done painting. Oh, no, no, no. You're doing it right now. Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. That's not how we roll in this house, ma'am. Oh, yeah, if you want to get a new house, who's going to do it? If I want to get a new house, who's going to get her pizza rolls? I don't know how that makes any kind of sense, ma'am. You can oh, wait till I'm done painting, okay? okay? Uh, he's at school, baby. Just like ah. you'll be tomorrow. It'll be a little calmer tomorrow because a little... Little Miss, little Miss Sunshine will be at school for her very first official day. Hold on, I got a little, there we go. And if y'all, okay, so if y'all ask a question and I don't specifically answer, but one of the ladies in the comments does, I promise you nine times out of 10, that's probably one of our family members in the studio. They are super knowledgeable. Uh, a lot of them have been with me since the very beginning. We are a family. Um, we encourage each other. In fact, I got to brag on them for a second because yesterday after I finished my life, they know that Sneak Peek Week takes a lot of emotional energy for me because I stress. I stress over it because I want it to be the best week in the interwebs that anybody could. I want it to be like camp. I want it to be like going to camp. Because as adults, we don't get to go to camp anymore. We need to blow dry this too. Um, so like that whole that whole experience is in the past for us. So this is like a virtual camp, and I try to be the best camp director I can possibly be. And they do. They get they get ignored a little bit, and they I warn them. I was like, look guys, I love you. You know I love you. But Sneak Peek Week, I'm going to be live every day. And I'm probably going to need multiple naps. <laughs> I'm probably going to be a little on the cranky side by the end of the day. Because I'm momming at the same time too. Um, and so as soon as I got done painting our apple yesterday, they popped on and they, they started encouraging me and making sure that I did not lose steam. But then in, in the same breath, they were over there encouraging each other for other things that everybody else had going on. I mean, it's, it's like the best little family that you didn't know you were missing. They're the best. Absolutely, I could not wish for more when it comes to my family through the paint studio. Okay, so I'm just giving this that second coat. Remember, I told you it only needed two, and this time, we're not rushing it. Don't rush it, because when you do, that's when you start noticing things that you're not too proud of. You're like, oh, I don't like that. I wish I wouldn't have I wish I wouldn't have forced that or or I wish I wouldn't have I brushed that. I wish I would have took my time with that. So why don't you do that? Take your time. Do a good job. I want you to, to set yourself up for success and be proud of what you put your work into. It encourages you to want to do it again. Okay. Right now we're all we're doing is we are laying a firm foundation for success by taking our time and using the right size brush, making sure that we're using good quality paint. It doesn't have to be expensive paint to be quality. Deco art is not expensive. It's, a, it's kind of middle of the road, you know. There's Apple Barrel and that's, that's super inexpensive but their consistency isn't across the board the same when it comes from like paint bottle to paint bottle. Um, Decor, I consider kind of middle of the road, depending on where you get it. At Hobby Lobby, it's only 99 cents uh, a bottle. At Joann's, if you catch it on sale, it's a dollar. So it's not too terribly bad. And a bottle of paint goes a long way. Um, then you've got some other acrylic paints that are, they're more, they, they can be more. Like bulk art can be a little bit more. And deco art. Oh yeah, no, Melissa, you totally have commercial rights to sell anything that you make. Absolutely. Okay, so Raven, a JPEG. So in the studio, you get the for each design that we release. You get the printable template, you get the JPEG, and you get the PNG. So the PNG 
is the color mock-up. That this right here, I use the PNG to to print off um, the mock-up so that I have something to look at. But I also have something to show. Say I want to do paint parties, and I want them to see what they have available for that season. I was like, I can print them. I can print the PNGs and put them in a binder, which is that's how I do it. I put them in a binder, and I can flip through page. Let them flip through pages, kind of like the cake book at at the bakeries where you can flip through all the different cakes and, and show them which cake you want. Kind of like that. Um, the JPEG is just like this, but black and white. Just the outlines, okay? I wish I had a JPEG printed out so I can show you. But the JPEG is just the outline of the design itself. No color, no, no um, mock-up painting. It's just the design itself so that you can trace it onto wood or you can resize it and make it any size that you need. The printable template is the black and white JPEG. I take the black and white JPEG and I size it perfectly to either door hanger or attachment size. And in the studio, you don't have to size anything to paint exactly what I'm painting because I upload all three of those files. You get the printable template in the size that I'm gonna paint it. So say, say the apple, the pie, and the garland were our paint studio bundle for the month, right? You get the apple. I go ahead and do the printable template in the size of a door hanger. I go ahead and provide you a printable template, so it's print and go, right, of the attachment in attachment size, but you also get the JPEG. So say you wanna do this in a door hanger size, you can take that JPEG and, and size it to door hanger size, okay? So you're not stuck with just one particular size of each design. You have the availability to resize it to whatever you want. Along with the garlands as well, you get the you get the JPEG of the garlands so that if you just wanna take one garland piece, like tomorrow, or I think it's tomorrow that we're painting the garland. So here's the garland piece. So if you wanted to make this into a door hanger, you could, you just take the garland, the garland um, template and you blow it up to door hanger size. So super, super simple. <coughs> If you're already a member, your price does not change. You are locked in at whatever price you register at. Even if I raise, say I've raised the price three times, which I won't do, but like not right. <laughs> I would not do that like boom, boom, boom. That's so mean, I wouldn't do it. Um, but say the price changes over the course of uh, years, right? Because we have so much tutorials, we, you know. So say you are an original member at $15 uh, a month you will forever be a member at $15 a month no matter what the current price is uh, for studio and that's because you locked it in you're grandfathered into your pricing well the people okay so I already answered that now you will need to think about <laughs> now you will need to think about <laughs> What is the site so that uh, I won't be, what is this site so, oh, Sheila, this is, this is my business page. This is Wallace House Designs. All week, all week, we're going to be right here. Same as today. Okay, so she's responding to Sheila. Um, I love this group. It's the, it's, it is very calming to even listen to you in the background while I'm working Thanks to the uh, mental therapies. Oh, Sheila Arnold, you're so sweet. You're just precious. You don't you don't need no mental therapy. You're the sweetest person ever. Okay, so I'm gonna go around. Okay, so y'all, this is my terminology gets it gets the better of me. I go around town. That just means I'm gonna take my brush and we're gonna go all the way around the design and paint one particular color. We're gonna paint the outside crest. I'm about to have to turn Ray Lynn's TV down. I can do that remotely from here. I found an app. <laughs> I found an app. Apparently, my TV brand has an app <laughs> where you can download the, the remote. And I can turn her TV down. Hold on. We're going to boop, boop. Okay, there we go. That's not ass out. I have a feeling she'll get the actual remote and bump it up when she realizes that I've bumped it down. She's done that before. Oh no, hold on. Boop, take my finger and just 
I hear it. I can already hear the remote picking up off of the, the, the bedside table. She's in my bedroom watching TV, which is right off of the, uh, the dining room where I am. Tomorrow she'll be at school and we won't have any background noise. And that's gonna make me sad. I know I'm gonna miss her. But kindergarten's gonna be good for her. She starts kindergarten tomorrow. It's gonna be good for her. She really thrives off, she really did a good job during uh, preschool. She enjoyed seeing her friends every day. She, she's really good at making friends. I was not. I was not good. I'm very thankful that she um, is a little different than me. I kind of kept to myself in elementary school. I was kind of afraid of other kids. I also had a lot of issues that I was working through. So it's probably best I didn't talk to other kids because there was a lot going on in my head. My dad had passed away when I was a little, little girl. I was three years old. And you know, when you're three, you don't comprehend that kind of stuff. And so by the time I was like eight and I was in elementary school, it kind of hit me like a brick wall what had happened. And I'm like, I finally started understanding. And so I was kind of working through all that amongst other things, right? It wasn't the only thing that I was working through. But as a little kid, I, was, I kind of kept to myself. And it was, like I said, it was probably for the best. But I also didn't, I'm not the best at making friends in real life. I think that's one reason why is because I didn't, I didn't spend that time, those early years making friends where Raylynn's going to be, ha going to have a totally different experience than I did. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint this apple. I'm just going to go ahead and paint it the light buttermilk just because it's a, it's a good little base coat. Okay, so there's, and we'll go back when we paint the apple, we'll probably base coat it the light buttermilk just to make it consistent. Oh y'all, it's already starting to look really good. I'm so excited. Best camp director ever, Deidre. Hey Lynn, I'm late and missed the beginning. You did a great job teaching. That's why I love watching you. Well Lynn, I love it when you come and hang out with me. So they did not, Juanella. Don't tell me they just took it up to 107. They better not. They better not. I was enjoying it at 99 cents. Looking on the site for the template now and found the pie. Is there a bundle for the design? There's not a bundle for the designs. Uh, there is a bundle for the blanks. Maybe next time I do a sneak peek, I will probably think about going ahead and bundling the designs together. The only problem with that is I don't release the garland to the public immediately because garlands are an exclusive perk of being in the paint studio. If you enjoy painting garlands, um, any garland that I release, it, before it goes to my website, it's one of those designs that graduates through the paint studio first. It's got to go to the paint studio first as a perk. Um, it's just a it's just a perk, um, and then the paint studio gets them for sixty days, and then once this, their sixty day anniversary, the garland then goes to the website. And I've got a bunch of garlands that need to be added to the website. So in sixty days, this apple garland will be added. The template for it will be added to the website but not right now, but you can get it as a blank. No, 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 Sheila, these are, okay. This is on my website. This is not a studio design. This is not a studio design, Sheila. You did the right thing. You did the right thing. Oh, there goes Rem. I sure hope that's not our lawn guy. It shouldn't be. My my yard is dead. I live in Louisiana. There's app, and we've had hardly any rain this summer. So there should not be a long guy outside my door. Make sure Mr. Wallace has not me. No, he has not. Okay, I don't think that's our guy. I think that may be the neighbor's guy. Okay, so let me go around and make sure that I've got my apple pie crust nice. I think uh, I've noticed a couple of spots where I didn't go all the way to the, the rim. 
Roll my baby. I need you to hush. Nobody, nobody cares that the, the long guy is outside. Nobody cares. You're the only one that cares, baby. I don't think he's ours. I think he's the neighbor's. But it sounds like it's right out my front door. And I'm not getting up to open the gate. Y'all are more important than my yard. <laughs> Let's see. If I need it bigger, I paste the JPEG in Word doc and then convert it to it. Ooh. I'm not a big fan of block posts. I'm not going to lie. I'm not. I have been looking for another way to, to create templates. I might try that. I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of block poster. So if y'all know another way to do it, um, if y'all know another way to do it, help a girl out because the only way I know how to do it and, and it universally, the um, Graham Wallace. Hey, is our long guy outside? Is he outside? Because he sounds like he's outside. I'm not going outside to open the gate. I just I just want you to be very aware of that. So he may be doing a half a job. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. I'm not going outside. Let's blow dry, okay? Because we need to move on to our next step. So if I wanted to paint with you during this workshop, I needed to order the wooden blanks earlier to get the garland. Yeah, but okay, so I honestly don't recommend people paint along with me. I always recommend you watch the live because there are times where I will paint something and I'm like, mm, I don't like how that turned out. And so if you're painting along with me, you're making the same mistakes I'm making, right? I might decide, oh, let's, let's change it up a little bit. Um, and have not received, oh, we haven't sent out the, the August one yet, Rhonda. We haven't sent the August one yet. Um, so see, I was just about to add red to my apple. And if you're painting along with me, you would have made the same mistake with me. So I always recommend watching through the very first time. I'm just base coating my, <coughs> oh my goodness, Roma, baby. I wish I knew that this guy was here so that I can let him out in the backyard. <coughs> He's not barking in our ear. I think he's in the neighbor's room. <coughs> Graham Wallace, I need you to answer me, dude. <laughs> Graham, tell me if, the, uh, if you've gotten a text message from the long guy because Romo needs to go outside. <coughs> His bark echoes. I think that's the neighbor because our guy, this sounds like two people outside, and our guy does not, he does not have a second to weed eat while he's mowing because I hear a mower and a weed eater. Okay. Uh, paint and Alt oh, Terry, don't you encourage him. <laughs> don't you encourage Graham. Okay, let's blow dry that because we're about to add um, we're about to add, we're going to go ahead and paint our apple. We're going to do all our shading all at once, okay? So let's get all of our block uh, painting done. That just means block painting is just kind of base coating each little piece. So we're going to go ahead and paint our red. This is Santa red. I'm just base coating this apple. So yes, we order blanks from Humcrate. If you need blanks, and if you're in the studio and you are not one that wants to cut your own blanks, hey, I'm with you. I don't want to cut my own blanks either. <laughs> um, I do cut my own blanks, but I don't want to. I live in Louisiana. It's hot. Um, so if you would prefer ordering blanks, you get an exclusive. That's the only way to get an exclusive. Uh, hold on, he is driving me. Care if the blank sky is here or not. Come on, Irma. Outside. You're being rude, so you can be rude outside. Okay. Sorry, y'all. 
his bark was just starting to get to me. So if it was getting to me, it was getting to you. Um, so Home Creations, the only way to get a discount on blanks for any of my designs is to be a studio member. It's an exclusive perk. Um, they get a 30% discount on all studio designs. And Home Creations is pretty affordable. They are probably for the quality that they provide, because they provide quarter inch birch. It's really nice wood that has a grain. It's really, it can, you can stain it really well, or you can paint it really well. Quarter inch birch. And you can get it in any design, in any size from four to 24. So it's completely customizable. So if you have a particular size door hanger that some people like to, to paint 18 inches, some people like to paint 22 inches. Some people like to paint 24 inches. Well, you can you can customize any design to any size you want between those those design parameters, uh, those size parameters, which is four and 24. Um, you can stay outside, buddy. If you're gonna bark the whole time he's at the door now, looking at me like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. No, you're not done. You can nah. -uh. Nah, -uh. you can stay outside. Go lay down. I can get loud and crazy now. <laughs> All right, Marie. <laughs> Order blanks from Home Creations. Okay, so I have been using the 3D. Okay, so yes, Sharon has been uh, getting the 3D options. So they do offer 3D pieces for our design. So if you like to paint the leaf or the apple, I think for this particular design, the 3D option is you, you get the, the apple pie, but then you get the apple as a 3D piece. It's really cool. It's really, really, really cool. All right, so let's go ahead and blow dry that. I'm not gonna paint my leaf or my stem quite yet. I say that. I think I will. I'm thinking about it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so just like yesterday, we're going. Oh, baby, you need to lay down. I know there's a lot of noises, but he's a German Shepherd, y'all. Those ears just pick up every sound. He's picking up me, her TV show, the lawn, the, the all the things. I'm going to dip my brush in both colors. But I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna knock most of that off. I don't want to come in with a muddy, with a muddy um, brush. I just want a light layer of paint. I'm just messy painting this in. This is probably a brush that's a half a size too big. That's okay. I can make it work. If you are Roma baby, please stop. Gosh, if it's not Ray baby, it's Roma baby. If you don't have very good control over your brush or working working with a big brush kind of scares you or it kind of intimidates you a little bit bump down a brush size this is this is a moment where i would bump down a brush size just because we are going to from a bigger piece down to a pretty small element so a quarter inch brush would have worked just fine but i'm able to get my half inch brush in here no issues Got a nice little base coat there. Okay, so I use, I use, okay, so there's two glues that I like to use. Well, there's actually three. Uh, depends on what it's gonna be used for. If it's going outside, I like to use tight bond wood glue, number two. Okay, it's water resistant interior and exterior. That's why I get the number two, it's the blue label, okay? I like this, but this takes forever to dry and cure. So, I, I do a little glue cocktail, okay? I do that and then so that I can uh, get it to fast set, I go ahead and add a couple of drops of super glue to the 3D piece as well. So I put the wood glue on and then I add super glue to a wrap, you know, Say I put the wood glue on, a good bit of wood glue on my apple. If my apple was 3D, I'd put a little uh, dot of super glue there, there, and there, and I'd put it down. And that way, the super glue dries super fast. So I like the Gorilla super glue, not the gel. I like the regular super glue. 
um, my super glue will dry super fast, but it stays in place while that wood glue is taking its sweet 30 minutes to dry and to cure because wood glue takes time to cure. Oh, y'all have some really good tips and tricks for organizing the files that you get through Studio. If y'all have any questions on how to do that, there are some really good tips that they're dropping as Studio members. I, come here, come lay down. Come lay down, baby. Just, just give your anxiety a rest. The rest of us would appreciate you doing that too. Thank you. All right, so for our apple, let's go ahead and do some, uh, some lazy painting. A little messy painting. I put, I dipped my brush in the base coat color, which is Santa Red, and then I dipped it in some light buttermilk, okay? So we're just gonna go in, and we're gonna work from one side of the apple, okay? I added just a little bit of Santa Red. This is a totally skippable step. You do not have to, to, to do this step. This is just gonna get some nice little texture to your apple. Your apple was fine before this step, but I like doing this with apples because apples are glossy. Okay, apples are glossy, and they have all different colors running through them. Okay, so there we go. See all the different reds and whites? I did not wanna use white because white will turn it pink. The light buttermilk turns it, it's still a little pinky, but it's not baby pink. The light buttermilk has enough yellow in it that it keeps it, that it keeps the red, the, the red vibrantness of it without turning it super pink. So that's, that's our apple. Let's go ahead and grab just a round brush, just a round one, it's about a number four. We're gonna take our milk chocolate. And I'm just gonna fussy paint the stem. See, she's already turned that TV back up. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I can tell. So we're good. that's our first coats of all the things. Okay, I'm getting confused. I looked at Home Creations and did not find the bundle of the blanks that she is. Okay, give me just a second, I will link it, okay? I don't know if the link will be clickable until I'm done live, but I can get that for you. Let, let me do that, because I need to let this dry anyways. Let me go to Home Creations. In fact, here, let me, let me move this off to the side for a second. There may be a glare, I think there is. Okay, I think you can see that. So we've got home creations here. Let me make sure you can see this. Let's see if it catches up. Yeah, okay, you can see it. There's still there's still a light, but you can see it. So we go to home creations. Okay, this is home creations. You go to designer collection. Okay, go to Wallace House Designs. And then it should be do, 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 right there. The fall, sweet fall apple bundle, okay? That's the bundle. Okay, and then there's options. So that's option number one, where it's an etched, everything is etched, just like I have it here, but um, no 3D pieces, okay? So there's an, an option to get it without the words. So we've got it with the words. You can get it etched without the words. You can get it not etched altogether. And then these are the three options. So the fall sweet fall um, and the apple for the apple pie are your 3D options. So if you if you add the 3D options, so here's, this, here's the selections. You've got no paint lines, paint line selection number one. And it gives you, if you're wondering which one, which option is which, it gives you a preview. So here's paint line number two that adds the words. Paint line number one is without the words. And then it asks you, do you want 3D selection? No 3D selection or yes, add the 3D selection. And it drops down a preview of your 3D selections. And then, um, then you're good to go. You are good to go to be able to order. I hope that helped. And it should have given 
our design just enough time to, to pretty much be dry to the touch. So let's go ahead and blow dry because we're about to shade all the things. <coughs> Okay, so Sandy, the secret word, this one right here, the paint, um, that is the word that if you want to get uh, a link to the blanks bundle or a link to the paint studio to become a member, you put that word paint in there and then after I'm live, I will come back and I will drop the, uh, it's kind of like a buffet table. You pick the link that you're looking for um, and it will, it will um, send you to wherever you're wanting to go. So it could be either to register for the paint studio or to get more information on the paint studio, or it could be, oh, I wanna order this blanks bundle or I wanna go peruse the blanks available and um, it'll send you there. You could also ask if you haven't already, you can also ask and put the word paint in there if you would like to get, we still have three more days of sneak peek week. If you want to get the paint list, if you haven't already, if you wanna get the paint list, you can put the word paint in here as well, and there will be the sneak peek week supply list. It'll give you the paint list that I'm using all week this week, along with the brushes and any other supplies that I need uh, for this week. And it also gives you a little bit of a, um, of a schedule of what I will be. So yesterday we did the door hanger. Today we're doing the attachment. There's some super secret bonus tutorials coming in the next couple days. And then Friday we'll, we'll round it up with the garland. Okay. I know, I need an apple pie too. Apple pie is one of those desserts that you can eat for breakfast. I could have done some apple pie for breakfast. Rayla, I took Raylan and got her some donuts this morning because it's her last official day of summer. And she was like, mommy, I really want a donut. I was like, let's go. Okay, so now that we've got everything base coated, let's move our paint palette out of the way. Let's get a clean, let's get a clean one. Let's get a clean palette. Okay, so this is my clean palette. You're not going to be able to see my palette too much. Well, I can probably, I don't want to pull the thing back too terribly much because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. So yesterday we, we shaded with the heel. I'm going to show you how to shade with the toe now. You do whatever is more comfortable for you. Some people like to shade with the heel. Some people like to shade with the toe. The heel, okay, so with your angle brushes, You've got the heel, which is the short end of your angle brush, and you've got the toe, which is the long end. Sometimes you'll hear me refer to the, the front and the back, but. Okay, so this is a good, normally this doesn't happen, but the reason I dip in my floating medium, this is floating medium up here. It's just the clear stuff that's in your paint. Do you see this residue right here? That's red paint that's stuck in my brush. So I'm gonna clean my brush out. I do that. So that, and I'm gonna clean that up so that I have a clean swatch area. <clears throat> I do that every time I load my brush with floating medium to make sure that my brush is clean because there's nothing worse than getting this far in a design and start shading for it to only get this little halo effect, a little residue from a dirty brush that has dirty paint water in it. Keep in mind, your dirty. <laughs> that was me, Rama. That was me. It was me. That was me. It sounded like like this hitting down there. It sounded like the door knocking. Um, okay, so we're gonna start. With, let's start with the apple. So I'm gonna take lizard and crimson. From my baby, I'm gonna take just a. That's way more paint than we'll ever need. Okay, especially with this little bit of a project. I'm gonna dip my brush that's already loaded with floating medium. And I'm just gonna create a little swatch down here. So do you see how that paint is staying concentrated on the about the first third of my brush? That's what floating medium does, okay? It keeps your brush clean over here so that the paint can stay over here. And we're going to just add that. We're using the toe this time, not the heel. So some people like to use the heel. And since we were just doing straight lines yesterday, I wasn't too concerned about using the toe. I knew we'd have plenty of opportunity to shade with the toe. Most people shade with the toe. See, 
it livened it up already. See how it just deepened it? If you want it to be even deeper, let it dry, do a second layer. We're not done. We're gonna, we're gonna continue around with our apple. We're gonna go underneath our leaf, okay? And underneath the stem. This is, we're still using the alizarin crimson, okay? Now the, that leaf and that stem still needs a couple more coats. But we'll get to that once we do our, once we're done with our shading. All right, so I'm, I'm flipping it around. And I'm gonna shade the bottom of my, my apple. She has turned it up again. Or it switched to another episode. Sometimes these episodes, one's louder than the other. Ray Lynn, baby, I'm turning it down because it's really loud, okay? There we go. That should be good. She loves it loud and it drives me crazy. Okay, so we're going to take our Santa Red because we need to highlight this. We've already added a little bit of a highlight. Actually, I'm lying. We're not going to do that. I kind of like the way that it's highlighted on its own. So we're just going to take a little bit of, we cleaned our brush. Uh, we're just going to pick up a little bit of floating medium all by itself. Make sure that we have a clean brush, and we do. And we're just going to feather this out just a little bit. So all this is doing is pushing that very last little bit of a lizard and crimson where our paintbrush stopped. So wherever you pick up your brush, you're, it's noticeably going to to show where your brush picked up. So all I'm doing is I'm feathering that out just a little bit and I'm just kind of cleaning up a few of my brush strokes. All that's on my brush is floating medium. So the floating medium is pushing the wet paint around to where I want it. So I can kind of, I can kind of fix it exactly how I want it. So there's your apple, it's done. Your apple is completely done other than the leaf. The actual red of your apple is done. Have you ever heard of Northern people but put cheddar cheese in their apple pie? Okay, so who said that? So Marie, I like cheese with my apples. I will get Havarti. Is it Havarti? I like Havarti cheese. Sliced Havarti cheese with sliced apples. I'm good to go. Goat cheese. I love goat cheese with apples. I'm funny about that. My father-in-law got me hooked on that. See, Sharon, she likes to, she likes to uh, paint with the toe, but some other people like to paint with the heel. Okay, Erica, scroll up to my comment about confusion. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I'm getting, oh, what, I'm getting confused. Okay, scroll, okay. I think you're confusing them about home creations. They want to know how they order from you and the blanks are coming from home creation. Okay, so you go to home creation, you don't order blanks on my side at all. It used to be that way. I used to ship them out myself. But home creations can do them so much faster than I can. And they offer a beautiful quality, okay? So for my designs, if you need them in wood blanks, you go to home creations. If you need digital versions, you go to Wallace House Designs. I know it's a little confusing, but it's, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. They offer amazing quality. Uh, in pie, absolutely. No, 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 I did not see the pie part. I did not see the pie part, no, absolutely not. I would not put cheese and apples in the pie. I'm not from the North, but I can promise you, I pro that probably would not make it to my plate at a potluck. It probably would not. And I try some things, like I'm a, I'm a good taste tester. That probably would not make it to my plate on a, in a potluck. I don't know. It's just that's just a little in a pie. I like them cold. I will eat my cheese and my apples cold. That just needed a second coat. So before I started, and I'm not going to shade that. That actually turned out really good. I'm going to leave it alone. My messy painting. I'm happy with it, so I'm going to walk away from it. Now that stem, on the other hand, we're going to bust out our our little our little um what is that called round brush. If I can find it again, there it is. 
We're gonna bust out our little round brush, this is a size four, and we're gonna do our second coat there because we're about to shade it as well. Like we did in pumpkins the other day. Hold on, what did? Shade behind the apple. Ooh, you know what, Terry? Thank you for catching me early enough in the live because now I'll, I'm going to do that. Yes, we are gonna shade behind the apple. I'll show you how to make that apple look like it's pop, like laying on top of this pie. We did that in the studio the other day with our pumpkin and I promise you that pumpkin looked good to begin with, but it looked 10 times better once we lifted it off of the background that we painted. So next month, uh, there's, y'all don't, don't be jealous. I had to test drive. I had to test drive the idea of next month's um, technique by a couple of, of, of studio members. I was like, okay guys, I've got to show you this. So don't, don't, don't be shocked if this shows up next month. I need to know how you feel about it. And I showed them the, um, the technique that I was thinking about doing in the studio next month. And they went bonkers over it. They were like, absolutely, I need to know how to do that. So I already know what our technique is gonna be next month and I cannot wait to, to teach it. But I feel, I feel like adding a little 3D something and making it lift up off of the, the technique that, cause it's definitely a background technique. Um, making it lift is gonna elevate it even more. So y'all have my brain already jogging for, future months in the studio. When it's just so, I was looking at Hobby Lobby yesterday for a blending job, but didn't, but I, but I did see just so, not sure what this is for. Okay, so Toby, am I saying that right? Is it Toby? Cause I love how you spell that. Um, Toby, just so is more for canvas painting. It has multiple uses, but just so is usually what canvas painters will prime their canvases with to make it stark white, okay? And to fill in those little crevices of uh, the woven canvas. Gesso is, is, it has other uses too, but that's the, that's the primary use for it. Um, blending gel is gonna be over in the acrylic paint section over with the craft paints. I have found it on the craft paint aisle over with DecoArt and, and at Michael's, it's over there by the Craft Smart paint. Um, I have found it with the sealers, actually, like the, the eight ounce bottles of sealers. So find the bigger bottles and you will probably find the, um, okay, I'm bumping down to a fourth. I think this is a fourth. No, this is a three eighths. So slightly smaller angle brush. Oh, okay, so if you have a Joann's or a Michael's, they carry it as well. All the big boxes carry it. Let's see. Let me look at my mock-up real quick. Let me see what, what I want to do next. I am probably going to come back on this apple and, and liven it up just a little bit more, but I want to let it dry completely. Let's go ahead and move on to our crust. We're going to paint our stem first and then we're going to move on to our crust. We need a little bit of our darker brown. Doesn't matter which brown you have. I have raw umber. If you're using dark or bittersweet chocolate, that will work as well. I'm not gonna use floating medium. I'm just putting a teeny tiny little bit of brown on my brush. And I'm going to do the underneath. Okay. You can use some floating medium if you want. This is such a teeny tiny little element. We just need to get it painted in there, okay? This is not gonna be the same as yesterday's stem. Yesterday's stem was so big and such a prominent point of our design that it caught eye. We just need to add a little bit of, of color variation in there, okay? So that's all we did, we just added a little bit of shadow. Okay, let's, let's get our half inch back out. We're gonna add a little bit more to that apple and then we'll move on to our, we'll move on, we'll move on to our, um, 
our lattice. Okay. I just want this to be just a little bit darker. So if your shade, when you're shading, if you're shading and you're like, oh, that's just not dark enough, don't switch colors yet. Do a second coat first and see if that deepens it because you gotta remember when we're shading like this, you're putting such a light coat. And with the apple, I don't want all of the shading to be super dark, but I do want this further edge of this apple, the one that's kind of in the shadows and underneath, I want it to be kind of dark because that's where all the shadows are hitting on this apple. Okay, and I think once that dries, that's gonna be a lot deeper. <coughs> Let me get it. I'm gonna peppermint before I start coughing in your face. I don't want to be rude. All right, so let's go ahead and blow dry that because I don't want to run my hand through it when we start working with all this texture right here. I do. So this is what floating medium looks like. Ignore that sticker. They rebranded. They changed the colors of the bottle. But that's what floating is. Folk Art brand. And this is blending gel. I have older bottles, but they, they didn't change them much. They just changed the colors. All right, let's grab, I think I'm gonna stick with the, the half inch. I, I have my three eighths inch ready, but I think I'm gonna stick with the half inch for my lattice. anxiety is getting the best of him okay so we are going to we're gonna get the fawn we're gonna get out fawn burlap oh someone was asking me a good alternative to for fawn because they're having trouble finding this one as well okay so this is fawn this is burlap so burlap is a little got a little bit more taupe to it fawn is a little bit more creamier color but that's a good alternative. Let's see, what's this one? This is khaki tan, it's darker, okay? But Fawn has more of a peachy color to it, a kind of a peachy brown. <clears throat> okay, just get a dot of that. I've got my 3 eighths off to the side if I need it, but we're gonna attempt to do this with the, the half inch. We're gonna make sure our brush is clean since we put it in dirty water. It's clean. We're gonna dip our toe in the fawn, and it's really saturated over here, so I'm gonna do what's called walking it out, okay? So I started loading my brush over here. It's really saturated, so I'm gonna, every time I, I swipe, I'm getting further and further from the original swipe, and that will knock off the majority of the paint off my brush, okay? <clears throat> okay, so here's where things get tricky, and here's where you may want your mock-up to be not uh, to be really close. So I'm going to put my mock-up off to the side so I can see it, and I'm going to use it as a oh here comes from my puppies going back in as a um, kind of a a guide, okay? Because with lattice, it's an over under basket weave, okay? So you're gonna have you're gonna have sections that are longer. So let's go ahead and paint one of those. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna do the left side of all of the rows that go like this. So these three rows, so this one, this one, and this one, I'm gonna paint the left side. Okay. And if I paint over something that doesn't need it doesn't need the float, I can just take a baby wipe real quick and clean it up because the floating medium does stay pretty wet. Okay, so I'm painting over this stripe, okay? So th this is where, like I said, you gotta visualize it. Let me see if I can take away all of those. Okay, so we're just focusing on this stripe. This stripe goes 
over, under. And then it comes back over. So since it's going over this one, I'm going to take my, my, my shade color and I'm just going to um, shade right there, okay? So since it went over here, I'm going to also shade to the right, right there, okay? I'm also gonna shade to the right, right there, okay? I hope that is making sense. <laughs> Okay. Alrighty, so we've got that. So now, focusing on this stripe, since it went over, okay, so it went over, under, over. So now with this one, if this one went over, this one's going under. So I'm going to ignore this one just like we ignored that one right so this one goes this one goes under this one goes over so i'm going to start here i know this this is the most confusing part that's why this one was a really good one to teach live because i had a feeling that it was going to be confusing if i, if I let less jib line doing it right if I didn't teach it or at least showed you how I would paint it. So we went completely over. We're gonna skip this, this little square right here and we're going to shade right here, okay? There we go. And I'm just coming, I'm not dipping in my paint, I'm just picking up some of that. I'm working my way back this way because I had loaded my originally with too much paint in this puddle I was able to walk it out over here and thin it out well now I'm with every swipe I'm, I'm, I'm walking it back to the original puddle that way I'm not wasting the paint okay so this one went over uh, that one went over this one went under that one went over this one went under let's go ahead this one goes over so this one's going to mimic what this one did. So that makes it kind of easy now that we've got two stripes. This one's going to do, ex we're going to paint this one exactly like we painted this one. All right, so this goes under. So we're going to start here and paint it. There we go. Okay, if we buy the blanks from Home Creations, are we able to find the color? Yes, so every week, Home Creations and my site, we release the exact, set. so whenever I do a template to Wednesday, you can find the color mock-ups on, on my Facebook page from template to Wednesday, but you can also find the coordinating template over on my website for the color mock-up. From what I understand, they're gonna start adding color mock-ups as reference to their site so that you can kind of see the potential of each design. Okay, so now that we've got this stripe, done, this side done, I'm, I th I'm thinking I'm gonna erase this right here, y'all. Just bear with me. I'm confusing myself because I was jumping the gun. I went ahead and started painting this when I wasn't ready. So now we're gonna, I've just, we, we, we painted this, these stripes. Now we're gonna turn it sideways and we're gonna paint these stripes. And then we'll go, after we get those stripes done, we're gonna do the exact same thing that we just did. Once we get those stripes painted, we'll be able to go back and fill in wherever we need a kind of just a shadow to make the lattice look a little bit more full, okay? So starting with this stripe, this one goes under, and we know it goes under because this one right here is shaded and the, the, the pie crust is going underneath it. So that means it comes up and goes over this one. So it's going under, over. So we're gonna stick to the left just like we did using the toe of our brush. 
and paint this entire section. Okay. So I'm adding, whenever I need to load my brush, say my brush is running out of floating medium, I just dip the heel and come back over here. And if I need paint, I just dip the very tiptoe, to about three bristles worth of the tiptoe. Very tiptoe. And swipe it again. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Since this one went under, this one goes over. So I know that I can paint this whole section from here to here. Add a little bit more paint to mine. Okay, I don't like how that went down. So I'm gonna take a baby wipe. I'm just gonna pick it up, okay? That's how easy it is if you don't like it because we're laying such a thin layer of paint. My, my hand kind of spazzed a little bit and it kind of got outside of the lines. There we go, I'm gonna add a little bit of paint. Okay, there we go. Same thing with this one. So it goes under this row. That means it's gonna go over this row. So I'm gonna start here, starting on the left of the, of the line and we're just going to add the shade there. Okay. Marie says, I would have overthought this one. Yeah, this one, this one's as simple of a shape as is, it is kind of intimidating as far as like, how do I go, how do I make that? The lattice is really the part that I was like, I feel like people are gonna get confused on that one. Just on the, the mechanics of it. Not that it's a hard technique, it's just the mechanics of it. So this one went under, so this one goes over. So this one's going under, over, under. So let's go ahead and start with this one. Since we know it goes over, and just go ahead and do as much as we can with this loaded brush. Okay, I'm gonna load it just a little bit, and I'm just gonna add just a little bit there stopping where this this stripe picks up same thing here i'm going to go here and stopping where the this picks up we're going to blow dry this because we're not done but we've got a good start and we can now go in and add a little bit of of um extra to it so that we can really see the shading in it okay It doesn't take but a second to dry. Okay, so here's our here's our design. This is how it would sit on a porch leaner. Okay, so I'm just I'm picking up some of the fawn, or like I said, you can use burlap. You can um, use any of those really kind of I call it burnt pie crust color. Let's see. Let's pick, if this goes over, let's see what this looks like. We can always take it away if we don't like it. Yeah, I like that. So let's go with all of the pieces that go over, all the ones that go over. Let's add a second, let's shade the other side. As if the edges of the pie crust are getting a little crispy because they're they're kind of the free edge. So that's all I'm doing. This is where we get to use our imagination just a little bit. Let's don't forget this little section down here. Okay. So this went over, so we're painting both sides. We painted both sides here and here. I need to paint this one. So let me turn it around because I like to pull my brush towards myself. So I'm gonna start right there. Okay, so this, this is one that goes this way. So I'm gonna start right there. There we go. 
Now it's starting to make sense. I, I'm so glad it's starting to make sense. It's amazing the difference just a little bit of shading can make. It really makes it pop and it really makes it look like these stripes are going over and under. When really we just did a checkerboard, right? That's all we painted. That's how this started off. It started off as a checkerboard and just with some strategic, very strategic. I'm not gonna lie, this one is strategic, right? Some strategic shading. Now let's, we did these three stripes. Now let's work on these three stripes and do the same thing. Anything that looks like it's going over, let's do the opposite end and finish it off. Okay. And they don't have to be perfect. Remember, this is pie crust. Nobody cuts their pie crust absolutely perfect strips. It's just like a noodle. Nobody makes perfectly straight noodles. But they all taste amazing. Okay. some more one. Oh, look what I did. I accidentally pulled my um, red. So I'm going to clean my brush. That scared me when I saw red just all of a sudden appear. I'm going to take my and dip it in floating medium. We're going to make sure my brush is clean since we did touch red. Red likes to sneak up and hide in your brush. And we are going to just reload. It takes just a second go. Okay, this one goes over. Okay, here we go. So do all, don't forget your secret word today is paint. If you would like to get more information on the paint studio, you can put the word paint in the comments if you haven't already. If you would like to get the link to where you can grab your supply list, if you haven't already, some of you already have, uh, that will also be linked there as well. It'll be like a buffet, okay? You'll get the link to that. You'll get, which is your color list and your paintbrush um, guide that you'll need to do all the pieces that we're going to be doing this week. You'll also get a link to Hung Creations where you can uh, peruse and find the Blanks bundle or the individuals. You can, you can purchase these as individuals too. You do not have to buy the bundle. If you just want to paint the pie, you can, buy, you can um, order the pie in any size that you want from 4 to 24 inches. If you would like to order the apple and just the apple, or if you just want to order the garland, you can do that as well. If you want to curate your own garland, here's a little tip that I like to do. You can order six pieces of any design you want in about six inch. Order them at, the, at six inches size. All you'll need is a drill to drill your holes because garlands come with drill holes already cut out from them. But if it's not specifically a garland set, you can curate your own garland. <coughs> Oh, we're not going to forget that. I'm not going to forget that, Terry. We're going to shade behind this apple. We're going to make that apple pop. We're not done with the crust yet. We still have to go around the, la uh, the scallops. So I'm just cleaning my brush because it can get kind of muddy. I'm reloading it with the same fawn. Okay. I'm going to go this. I'm going to blow dry that real quick because I don't want to run my hand through that. We're going to go around the scallops. All right, is it Cassie or Casey? I'm gonna assume Cassie. Okay, so Cassie, what I use garlands for is you can decorate them. You can use them to decorate uh, your mantle. You can, I've seen people use them to decorate a window. Um, I have seen people put them on a shelf and, and decorate a shelf with them. I have even seen people not string them together because it's obviously a garland. You string it together and you hang it 
like I said, like on a mantle. I have hung mine on my china cabinet because we don't open my china cabinet on a regular basis. So having something draped in front of it is, uh, it works. So I use mine on my china cabinet a lot. It, especially if I have a couple that I want to use, but I can't, I can't decide which one I want to display. I'll put one on the china cabinet, one on the, on the mantle. <clears throat> um, but I have seen some people not string them together and not use the garland as an actual garland. They use them as tear tray pieces or um, some decorations for some shelf decor. They're just smaller pieces. They're six inches usually in size on the longest edge. So if it's, if it's a tall design, it's six inches tall. If it's wide, it's six inches wide. If it's a circle, then it's a six inch circle. It's just however your imagination takes it. That's the good thing about everything that we do here on Wallace House Designs. If, if I paint it as a door hanger, but you want to decorate your um, chimney hearth, your fireplace hearth, and just use it as a big old piece of, of room decor, I've done that before too. I have used a pumpkin door hanger that I just absolutely, I was so impressed with myself. I was like, oh, that one, that one has to be seen. <laughs> I have uh, just propped it up against my fireplace hearth and it just became room decor. <laughs> my sister giggles at me when I do that. She goes, mm, shouldn't that go on your door? That's kind of big. I was like, yeah, it's big and it's, I'm proud of it. Let, leave me alone. Okay. So we're just going all the way around, we're going around town. We're doing the exact same thing. We're just adding a little bit of shading to the very edge, as if this just got pulled out of the oven and the very edge is crispy. Tear tray is what came to mind, but I know that, uh, that this one would be, yeah, depending on how big your other pieces are. So what if you were to use this, this, this is a 10 inch porch slinger attachment, okay? Um, Friday we'll be painting our garland, but, um, if you wanted to use a porch leaner attachment in a tear tray, which I have done before, you just want to make sure that your other tear tray pieces are uh, bigger. You don't want this to look gargantuous against your four inch pieces, right? So I would put this probably on the actual base of the table leaning against my tear tray, or um, I would put this alongside the tear tray, not necessarily in the tear tray, or I would put it on the very tip top tier. That way there's nothing, it's not, it's not, um, I'll have to show you. I have a tear tray behind me. Maybe later in the week, I'll, I'll be able to show you once we get a few more pieces painted. We can decorate a tear tray with some of the pieces that we're gonna paint this week. That way you can kind of see it in a different light than what they're typically intended for. Okay, so there's our crispy parts. Now we do need to shade behind this apple because Terry is super excited about it, okay? So Terry has not let me forget about it. So let's, um, you can use garlands on a porch. Yes, you can decorate your front door and your porch. So you put your garland on if you have a railing. You can, you can make some, uh, your garland you can put your garland on your railing or you can uh, drape it over the entryway of your door. Okay, so I'm taking the same color. I've not cleaned my brush yet. And I'm going to float just a little bit of this fawn just on the outskirts of this apple, okay? I'm gonna do it all the way around the apple. And that's gonna make the apple look like it's it's sitting on top of this of this uh, pie. I don't want it to be super dark or super distracting. I just want it to be just dingy enough. I'm saying dingy just because it's a brown color. But I want to, to Make this apple look like it just lifted off and it's creating a shadow. 
and go under the leaf too. And the reason I'm using the fawn and not like a darker red and a darker green is because the shadow is being created on the crest and not on the actual apple itself. The apple is creating the shadow. It is not actually being shaded. All right, let's blow dry this a little bit because I, I wanna get this little, this little piece right here. It will make the apple look like it's just, it's laying right on top. Like I said, you want to go a little bit behind that leaf. You don't want perfect lines. You just want there to be a little bit of a, a, a shadow casted. And it does, it makes a huge difference at the end of the day. All right, still not done with the fawn. The fawn is the thing that really makes this thing pop, okay? We still need to go on the inside of our pie crust. So we're going to clean our brush just because it does get muddy in between transitions. We're gonna add our floating medium, add fawn to our brush on the tiptoe of our brush. We're gonna blow dry all the things. We need everything to be completely dry. The only thing that's looking kind of strange is this inner ring of the pot. Okay, so we're gonna... I'm getting pretty fond of the fawn accents. Oh my gosh. Marie Mosley, you stop it. Stop it with the with the cheese. Look at you just laying on the cheese. So I'm gonna go around the inside and I'm just putting a little bit, I'm gonna go all the way around, even on the milk chocolate part, just because it's not gonna hurt it. And we're just going to shade the inner circle on the inside of the pie. And that'll make it look like the lattice is tucked in under that scalloped edge. Okay, and like I said, you do not have to have the, the, sh the firmest grip. This can look a little on the hazy, look, look super close. These are not perfect brush strokes, okay? Nobody's getting that close. This does not look pristine, okay? I don't want you stressing over making the perfect circle or getting a perfect ombre with this, this floating medium. That's not the purpose of it. We're just putting in a little bit of a shadow. You want it to be a nice, heathery look. Nice little feather-like touch. Putting a layer, super thin layer of an accent color to create separation between one element of the design and another element of the design. So if you break it down, the pie filling is an element. Each row of the lattice is an element. The scallop is an element and the apple is an element. And even in the apple, you have little micro elements like the stem and the leaf. So all you're doing is you're creating separation. So that's all we've done with an angle brush. We just created separation strategically. So I'm gonna go back in. There's a couple of spots where I kind of overpainted, like right there and right there. See where I got outside of the line? Just take a little bit of a baby wipe. If it's done with floating medium, then it's gonna be an easy cleanup, a little easy fix. If you want, since this is an edge, you can go around and do a light, just a light shade on the very inside of this as well. Okay, we can go around. Just like we did with the lattice, get it crispy on both parts, both sides. 
just your preference. You don't have to do this part, but I feel like it does make it look more fresh out the oven pie. Like if we go around and clean up this edge right here. So let's get about half of the pie done and I'll show you the difference between adding some shape. So yeah, we've got just a little, we'll go to this little lattice piece right here. Connect the dots. Okay. So you see this half of the pie looks one way and this half of the pie looks totally different and it's just one element. We shaded one element. This is brighter. This is a little darker. That's all we're doing. We're just adding some separation. Pam, I think, I know I get mine at Hobby Lobby, but I have seen it at Michael's too. I don't think I've seen it at Joanne's. But burlap is, is similar. It's a little taupe, taupier, and not as brown, but it works. It's a good alternative. It's not my favorite. I prefer fawn. I didn't always use fawn. Fawn was one that I, like the name threw me off because I, I, you know, it sounds like a baby deer. <laughs> I'm like, oh, but that's, that's so woodland. It's kind of woodsy. And then, you know, the more I played with it, the more I used it, I found so many applications. I use this to shade flesh tones. Like if I do my gnomes, this and pe oh, pebble would probably be a good alternative because I kind of alternate this color and pebble for my gnome noses for shading. There we go. I like it with both sides on the lattice and on the inside ring of the pie itself shaded. All right, I think we're done. What do y'all think? Do you think we need to shade the leaf? I don't know, I keep looking at it. I, I figured let's, let's just take a vote. Should we shade the leaf or leave the leaf alone? We can make it a little darker under here just to create a shadow, but I don't know, what do y'all think? Oh, Juanella says she found Fawn on Amazon for 73 cents. I love this design. I Me mean, too, Pam. I like it too. I've been dying to paint this one. I've been dying to paint all the apples with y'all. Ever since we designed it, I was super excited to paint it. <laughs> Another awesome job. Oh, thank you, Terry. Okay, so I think I am just because we've got some time. Yesterday we painted in all a two and a half hours, but that's because we had a we had a little we had a little friend pop in periodically to check on us. Ray Lynn thought we were we were lonely. <laughs> she thought we were lonely. We might even put a little highlight. Let me show you how you can put a little highlight using the same technique with the floating medium. There's a couple different ways I like to do highlights, but you can definitely use the floating medium. So let's add a shadow and a highlight. So I've got the Hauser Dark. Remember, I used Hauser Light and Hauser Dark. Okay. We're gonna use the dark. We're gonna add it to the toe of our brush, just like we did with all the other colors. I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna do the underneath, okay? Just gonna do the underneath. And then I'm gonna clean my brush, let that dry. I feel like if we need it to be a little deeper, we can add a second layer of it. So we blow dry it. It can definitely go a little darker. So I'm gonna add, reload my brush, add a second layer and it will deepen it up. You do not have to change colors. Just add a second layer of it. It will build, it's buildable. This style of shading is buildable. shade the pie filling squares we could you know what? let's do that 
Let's do that. Let's finish our apple uh, leaf, and then we'll go in with the pipeline squares because we have time. We can definitely you can you can shade as much as you want. Now, when it comes to the pie filling squares, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, of a design anatomy course, okay? So y'all just hang with me when it comes um, when it comes to it. So I'm gonna take this same color. I'm gonna add a little bit of the fawn. So I'm gonna load my brush up. I'm gonna mix a, a highlight color. I don't typically mix my highlight colors, but for this one I am. I'm gonna take a little bit of the fawn and mix it in with that green. So I just walked it into the green. I need to put more there. I'm gonna pick up some fawn. Okay, and we're gonna make a lighter color that's earthy, because remember this is a leaf. It needs to be earthy. Doesn't need to be neon. It just needs to be a little lighter and earthy. All right, so we're gonna take this and put it on the very tip top. Here we go. Here we go. That gives us a little bit of a lift. You could have used white. You could have used a lighter green. And I was just, I was just feeling, I was just feeling a little, little frisky and wanted to, I just wanted to mix my own color. All right. So when it comes to the shading and the pie filling. We can use, let's see, you can either use your darker brown color. We used a lot of light buttermilk in that. So the, the milk chocolate, our original base coat color, has been manipulated so much, I feel like we could probably use milk chocolate and shade using it. And it will be just enough to lift that lattice up off of the, the pie filling. All right, so we're just gonna put milk chocolate. Let's test it out. Remember, it's buildable, so. All right, so this is where it could get tricky. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put my design to where I have horizontal and vertical, and I'm gonna go underneath every, yeah, no, this is perfect. The milk chocolate is just enough. We don't want it to be so dark that it's distracting. And we're gonna go underneath every horizontal stripe. Okay. Okay. What we want to be very careful of is we don't want it to be too heavy. We don't want it to be, um, we don't want it to, right here, it did it. it. We don't want it to go over the light buttermilk lattice. We just want it to be a barely there hint of, of, of darkness. Just deepening, just adding a shadow of where that lattice kind of sits on top of the filling. So we've done one, two, three. We've done the underneath of each one of these three stripes. We're gonna dry that. And then we're gonna we're gonna turn it, a, we're gonna give it a quarter turn. Okay. So we got it dry. So we've got it going this way. I'm gonna give it a corner turn. Okay, now I've got the other stripes going vertical. Okay. I'm going to add my milk chocolate to my brush. And now I'm gonna do it again. These three stripes, I'm going to shade underneath. So I'm gonna give that just a little bit of a shade. And that, we don't wanna, we don't want to shade completely the the box, right? We just want to shade two sides of it. We want to make a little corner. It's really heavy. Let me lighten that up. Okay. This is a skippable step. You do not have to do this part, but if you want to add more dimension, like I said, this is a technique that you can take it as far as you want, or you can leave you can leave it as is. This is a totally skippable step. Okay. 
And if it gets too, um, if it's too saturated, you just load your brush up with more floating medium and instead of paint and it thins it out. It thins out whatever looks a little too saturated, like right here, it looks a little too saturated. So I'm just picking up floating medium, I'm not picking up paint, I'm just working a little floating medium into my brush. I'm gonna reactivate all this paint right here. I'm just gonna push it around a little bit. I'm just thinning it out. It just kind of softens it. Ooh, it's looking so good. What a cross hatch paint style on a dark brown underneath have given the look of the apples being in the sauce. Ooh, it would have, or even, um, ooh. Instead of doing the swirls, you could have done, I just need that there's a little hair of a, yeah, right there and right there, just a little bit, itty bitty, itty bitty, right there. Um, yes, long story short, yes. So what that did was it created a shadow going this way, okay? So if you're looking at your design, all the shadow, like if you're looking dead at it, there's a little shadow here, there's a little shadow here, a little shadow here, okay? You can also go around once everything is dry and add just a little bit of shadow underneath the scalloped edges. It doesn't need to be a heavy one. It doesn't need to be heavy, just, just the hint of a shadow. Okay, so I'm just going in every square that touches the scallops. I've already done this one, but it's, it's barely there. Okay, just add it till your little heart's content. My heart's getting very content. Don't want to overdo it. Oh, I love it. I love it. Makes my heart happy. Here we go. So let's recap what we've done. We painted our center pie filling however we wanted it. I did a little hurricane with some messy painting. Then we came and we painted um, a plaid almost. These were just light buttermilk plaid stripes and we painted the, the scallops light buttermilk as well. And then we came in, we got a little bit of green right there. Uh, we came in and we, we painted our apple. Then we, we started diving into all the shading. We shaded our the back end of our apple right here, left the highlight there. We did not shade right there. We shaded uh, the, the leaf. And then we started working on all of our, our pie crust, which creates all the dimension, because remember, these were just plaid stripes. There was no dimension to them. There were no uh, color differentiation. We did straight from the bottle plaid stripes. All this dimension, all this separation comes from just shading. It creates the illusion of the, uh, paint strokes going under and over each other, but really that did not happen, right? It really did, it added the perfect touch. I'm so glad you recommended it. I, jo I just joined, will you send the link for the Facebook? Absolutely, uh, Sue. So within 24 hours of, of joining the paint studio, you will get a welcome email that will kind of kind of give you a rundown of all the important things you need to know the second you, uh, you join into the, the Facebook group. So you're kind of caught up there. We will do an opening ceremony after everybody's added in and I'll kind of walk you through the group and how to navigate. But um, the welcome email has all your like need to know right now information plus a link to the Facebook group. And if you go ahead and request to join the Facebook group by Monday, I should have everybody admitted in, okay? So that's my goal is by Monday because we're only open for this week. So while sneak peek week is live, so is the paint studio and we will not open for the rest of the year. We will not open again till sometime in 2023. So if you were to uh, join this week, you'll be admitted into the paint studio by Monday. 
I normally don't do that. I normally um, have new members wait till the first of the next month because really your registration is pre-registering you for the next month. Um, but as a, as a bonus, as a, I'm so excited you're joining our creative little family. We're gonna get you in during August so that as a bonus, you're getting August designs before you ever start your first official month. So you get bonus designs, you get our, uh, we have a pumpkin design that we're painting and there's tutorials. So you can go ahead and sink your teeth into some really fun tutorials um, while, we're, while we're waiting for September to start, okay? All right, what is that? Do y'all see that? I see that, that's gotta go. Take a little baby wipe and see if we can buff that away. I don't know what that is, but before I seal this thing, I don't know what that is. That's gonna bug me. Okay, it came off. It came off. I think I drug my paint, my hand through wet, sealed green, and it um, it kind of left its little mark all over the place because there was a little bit in the red too. So okay, so let's clean this up. I'm gonna show you how I add my my Velcro for my porch liner. I'm also gonna show you how to clean. Let me back this away just a little bit. So see all this paint on the edges. I like, I like to clean that up, okay? I don't like that showing. I think it gives a nicer look if we take something and clean those up. So this one compared to that one, look how, look how much it just totally transformed it. Totally transformed it. So let's go ahead and do the rest of them. We're just gonna go all the way around. Now, some people like to uh, take their brush and and paint the edges with their paintbrush. You can take a flat paintbrush and do this as well. I feel like this just goes faster. Once I'm done painting, I'm ready to use it or I'm ready to, to, to get it sealed and ready to be used or, or to gift it or to put it in a craft show or to, you know, load my website with a painted funsy. Okay, so that's done. See, didn't take but a second. It cleaned up the edges so that the edges look nice and professional without having to sit with a, a flat paintbrush. So you would take your flat paintbrush, dip it in your paint, and you would go like this all the way around. I don't have time for that. I used to do that. I don't have time for that. So what this is, this is a furniture repair marker that I got at the Dollar Tree. It comes in a three pack. There's a light pack and a dark pack. I grab the dark pack, I take the black one, and I throw all the others away. The black one is the only one I want. It's $1.25 for a three pack, and I need just the one, so it's $1.25 for a pin. And that's not too bad, because this thing lasts me forever. <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna blow dry, and I'm gonna make sure all my little oopsies, all this little rogue paint that just kind of splattered all over the place. Uh, we're gonna make sure it's nice and pristine. <clears throat> if you did not want to do the shading, you could totally take paint pen and do the exact same thing that we did with the shading and use paint pen to get your definition and your separation. I prefer the look of the shading. Yes, yeah, she black sharpie works just as well. <clears throat> I will say if you use black sharpie. Most Sharpie pens are oil-based, so depending on what sealer you're using, I would be very careful with the Sharpie, but Sharpie, I've heard a lot of people use Sharpie, and it works just as well. Sue, so I'm so excited you came to join us, and you're gonna come join us in our little crafty family over in the studio. This little spot's on the bug me, so we're gonna fix it. One little spot of black paint that came from somewhere. All right. So the way I seal this, you can take it outside and spray seal it just like your door hangers. That would be fine. I want to go ahead and seal it with a brush sealer. So yesterday I told you about my favorite spray sealer. Today I'm going to show you how I apply my favorite brush sealer. I like Liquitex. 
acrylic mediums varnish. They have they come in all different sheens. This is the matte. This is the high gloss. I also have the regular gloss. So I use both of these. I have different reasons of why I keep different sheens, but the if it goes outside, I typically use one of the glossy ones. Okay. Let me grab a tray. I have one that I reuse for glosses. This has layers and layers of, of um, sealer. You can't tell because it's completely clear. But I take my sealer, I put it on a tray like this. If I'm gonna spray, if I'm going to, um, if I'm going to uh, brush on. And I have a brush. Now I haven't used this one but a couple of times, but I have one brush that never touches dirty paint water, okay? This is a Royal and Lane Nickel. If you know me and you've painted with me for a while, you know I love the Royal and Lane Nickel brand. I'm not sponsored or anything. It's just the brand I prefer. Okay. This one never touches dirty paint water. Only because I don't want it to, to have any peekaboo oopsies when I'm sealing. I want my sealer to be completely clear. And I just dip it in the sealer and I work my way around. I normally go in long brush strokes like this. But if there's red, I've learned that uh, brush on sealers and reds, I like to do anything red in one layer, just because I don't want it to uh, create ghosted lines from the sealer. There's just something about red that you will get these just like, um, just these lines from the brush stroke. So I like to, like that apple, I painted that whole apple in one little swoop. And then I'm going around the rest of the design with a brush going um, in long strokes. Just making sure I get every angle. And if you don't, if you dry it, and you can blow dry this, if you dry it, you'll notice if you miss a spot because it won't be as shiny. Okay, so we're gonna dry it. So Anna, that was called um, floating medium. It was this stuff. It's by Folk Art. It was originally about $6 a bottle. It does go on sale, so you can wait for it to be on sale. I got it on clearance. That's why there's a little orange sticker. They rebranded, and so the bottle is a different color, but it looks just like that. spray seal it I do seal I do seal the edges just because you know the spray sealer kind of naturally just kind of goes all over but if I brush seal it I don't I don't I don't typically seal the edges I used to but I've I've never had an issue with mine splitting I've never had a big issue with mine splitting so the only reason you would seal the edges is to um, help prevent the weather from from splitting your wood. But like I said, I've never really had a huge issue with that in the past. So I've just stopped worrying myself over, that's a second coat. And like I said, this never touches dirty water. So I usually have a clean cup, this is Raylan's paint water, um, a clean cup and I just leave that off to the side and I go wash it first. Like I, I make sure that gets completely washed as soon as I'm done painting. Alrighty, so we're gonna blow dry this, and then I'm gonna show you how what I use to attach it. I use uh, industrial Velcro, <clears throat> and I'll show you um, what it looks like. It comes in two colors, black and white. Doesn't matter; they're all the same. There's no um, no difference between two, but the color. It is Velcro brand. Fun fact: if you have a business and you sell your pieces your painted pieces and you do interchangeable pieces and you use Velcro as your attachment, if it's not Velcro brand, they will, um, they will tag you and get you in trouble if you're using something other than Velcro brand. If you're calling it Velcro, it has to be, Velcro is a brand. Loop and hook and loop a fastener, hook and loop attaching uh, adhesive hook and loop are more accurate ways of, of um, saying
saying it's Velcro if it's not Velcro brand. If they catch you and it's not Velcro brand, they can get you in trouble because that's their brand. I'm making sure this is good and dry before I flip it over. I don't want to get any fingerprints in it. It doesn't take but a second to dry, but because I did a second coat, I want to make sure it's good and dry. So if you're not using actual Velcro brand, um, it's probably in your best interest to use the words hook and loop fastener. Um, in your, like your Etsy descriptions or your website descriptions of a, um, trying to find my Velcro. I have a big container of Velcro. Mine is Velcro brand. I was hoping to show you the box. But I think I cleaned so well, I hid it for myself. I do have a piece of it right here. I keep little stray pieces in my little caddy. I may have already used it though. Oh, no, I feel it. I feel it. It's all the way at the bottom. Oh, there it is. I, I found it. Okay, so what I mean by it has to be Velcro or brand. See how it says Velcro? If your box or your packaging doesn't say Velcro, you technically can't call it Velcro on your website description. So I buy mine in a big old box. This will last me years, okay, years. If I'm just using it for personal use, it'll last me years. If I'm doing craft shows, this is the best way to buy it. Um, they do, on Amazon, they do sell, not Velcro brand, they do sell like just the soft side or just the scratchy side because in making attachments, you're gonna use more of one side than the other, okay? So what I typically do is I like to put the soft side of the Velcro on the actual attachment itself and I put the scratchy side on anything that I'm attaching it to. So that's my rule of thumb. So every time I make an attachment, I know I'm going to, I don't have to think, what, what do I need? Do I need the scratchy side? Do I need the soft side? If it's the attachment itself, I need the soft side. So I'm gonna take some really crappy scissors and I'm gonna cut about a, an inch wide strip okay so I cut about an inch wide strip I cut both pieces just because I like I'm funny about it I like mine to be I like mine to be um, even and then I'm gonna take that as well and I'm gonna cut those in half so I get two almost kind of inch by inch squares they don't have to be perfect now I have two scratchy sides and have two soft sides. So I don't need these. I can set these off to the side and use these at a different time for whenever I make something else that has attachments on it. I'm gonna put this. I, ha I normally have a little uh, Ziploc baggie for all my scrap pieces of Velcro. That's what I can't find right now. That's what's normally in my fish finishing box. But I will take this soft side there's so many ways that you can match this up. Because this is just as wide as it is tall, I'm gonna to be able to eyeball the center of this without having to go center it on my actual porch leaner. But what I typically do is I will take the backing, which is half the struggle of this process because it's super sticky, super dirty. This is industrial strength. That's what you wanna use. Let me point that out. This is industrial strength. Okay, it holds, it holds heavy things. <laughs> it doesn't tell you how heavy, it just says it holds heavy things. Um, so, but it's super sticky. That's why it holds heavy things. So typically, if I didn't know where the center of my attachment was, I would go to my porch liner or whatever I plan to attach this to. I would take the sticky side off, the, the, the protected film off just like I did, and I would loosely take this and just hang it on the, the, 
the display piece itself, okay? And then I would take my attachment and I would press it, I would center it and press it. So this was my porch leaner attachment. Say this, okay, so say this is my, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this without something sticky. So say this is my, um, say this is my porch leaner, okay? So I've got welcome stenciled on the porch leaner. I have the O missing and it has a little square of the scratchy side of the Velcro. I'm going to lightly, not press it down, I'm going to lightly put that on, say my little Velcro pieces right here, I'm gonna put it on the Velcro and I'm gonna take my porch liner attachment and I'm gonna center it where that O should be and I'm gonna just press it in and it'll, it'll seal this onto my porch liner attachment perfectly centered to my own porch liner. Well, since I know where the center tip practically is, because this is practically a circle, I'm just gonna plop it right there in the center. This one's a no guessing one. It's, that's gonna work, right? And I'm done. So it's sealed, it's got the porch leaner um, Velcro, that is the industrial strength Velcro brand, Velcro, and it's ready to go. So Sherry puts magnets on her attachment. Then I have a magnet. Ooh, a counter sunk in my leaner. What? That's gotta be cool. What do you do to do what kind of glue do you use to glue that magnet in? So I'm pretty sure you're you're probably needing to um wait, counter sunk, like you have it on the back and it Oh, that's pretty cool. Where do you buy your industrial strength Velcro? Mary Lou, I buy mine in the sewing section and the adhesive section. So you can find it in two places at your craft stores. Um, the sewing section or the adhesive section where all the glues are. Um, in the, or if some stores are starting to get like a cosplay where people can make like cosplay costumes um, that has like the sheets of foam and stuff. Sometimes the Velcro is over there too. But I buy mine, typically I find it in the um, the sewing section, like the, the sewing machines and the fabric. You can find it in the um, sewing notions where you can buy different threads and stuff. For some reason, it's over there. And I don't understand why it's over there. I mean, I know you use Velcro in sewing sometimes, but it's usually over there. I also give some instructions. To, okay, so Pam, Pamela uh, says that she sends the square of Velcro whenever she makes an attachment to sell to somebody. She gives them the Velcro and says, here you go, with some little instructions on how to center their piece to their their leaner itself. Because, you know, these are handmade items. So it could everybody's could be just a little bit different. So to make sure that they have um, a perfectly centered one. That's how she does it. She gives them the attachment with some Velcro and some instructions on how to center their, their piece to their porch liner attachment just the way I did it just here. You're welcome, Mary Lou. Thank you, Sharon. I think it's pretty too. I can't wait to see y'all's because I have a feeling y'all were looking at that pie going, it's pretty, but I don't know how to paint it. But now you do and I can't wait to see your finished painting. Let's see, any more questions? I'm gonna, y'all don't forget, if you have questions, you can put them down in the comments and I'll come back later. If I missed one during the live, I'll oh, answer it in the comments. You wanna see it? You wanna see it? Yeah. All right, well, we're about to say goodbye, so you need to okay. look at it. This is how you make an apple pie. Oh, uh, you're so, that was so helpful. Thank you, baby girl. All right, well, I am gonna go ahead and sign off because it's about time for her to eat some lunch. And I think she's already put in a request for some pizza rolls. Yeah. That's what you want? Okay, well, then I need to go make those. If you have any questions when it comes to Speak Peak Week, Paint Studio, where to get the supply list for, for this week, uh, go ahead and put the word paint, how to register for Paint Studio. Go ahead and put the word paint in the comments if you haven't already. And um, I will link all that information um, after I go live to your comment. Alrighty, well, I will talk to y'all later. See you soon. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we'll be live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, just like we have been all week this week, with a super fun... Um, oh, Ray, baby. 
uh, with a super oh fun daddy. bonus oh tutorial. So I, I'd love oh for y'all to come hang out with me then. Hang I'll out. see you later. Hang Bye. Out.